Once upon a time from the land of fairy tales and foul play, I'm Vince Charming. Very news flash. I'm here at the Storyville Courts of Justice where stars of famous fairy tales are put on trial for their crimes. Twelve young jurors have been elected to hear this case. They have elected a foreman who will speak on their behalf. Each jury member understands the importance of their task and will reach their decision guided only by what they see and hear in court. They will then deliver a verdict, guilty or not guilty. Justice is in their hands. What is the worst thing that you have ever done? You are not allowed to tell mum and dad. What goes on between us is a secret. You promise? I cross my heart. I never get to go anywhere alone. My mum drops me off and picks me up every place I go. So, I went for a walk, all on my own, at night, while my parents were sleeping. I walked for hours. I was miles away from home. I found this lake and watched the sun rising in it. Like a guy from a movie or something. And your parents don't know? Mum came downstairs just as I came back into the house and said, Goodness, you're up early. You know, that story that you just told, it's, um, it's pretty sexy. Was it? Yeah. Well, that's useful to know. For when you meet a girl that you like? Yeah. You know, I could teach you lots of things this evening that will help you when you meet a girl that you like. Dad thinks you'll fix me. I don't think that you need fixing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you busy? <laughs> I mean, uh, I know you're busy. <laughs> oh, are you gonna give me the silent treatment too? No, Alex, I'm not gonna give you the silent treatment. Well, Emily is, and... And it's not very mature, so could you just talk to her? <laughs> you want me to make your sister talk to you because you feel bad for letting her down so terribly. Well, when you say it like that, it doesn't sound too great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I... I've done wrong, and I deserve punishment. <laughs> oh, it feels good to admit that. Let her rip, Dad! <laughs> Any time now. <laughs> Don't hold back. Fine, I'll start. <laughs> Alex, you are banned from leaving the house for two weeks! Didn't expect to see you here. You never let me finish what I was going to say. When? Yesterday, when you took my picture, I wanted to know why. <sighs> I, I I saw a man, you know, my brother, trying to be somebody else, struggling to be happy. That's no way to live. That's such bullshit. What is? I'm not trying to be someone else. Just because I'm with a guy and you don't like him. Uh, that's not what this is about. It is. You know what? Just forget it. I just thought it was a good picture. You know he's actually a good person. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Yesterday, what happened when he smashed your camera. He's not like that at all. He was just being protective of me. Yeah, that's one word for it. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, Tom, I can see you come in. I was in the library the other night. Mm -hmm in the restricted section. And I read something rather odd about a bit of rare magic. It's called, as I understand it, a Horcrux. I beg your pardon? Horcrux. I came across the term while reading, and I didn't fully understand it. <clears throat> I don't know what you're reading, Tom. This is very dark stuff, very dark indeed. Which is why I came to you. A Horcrux is an object which a person has concealed part of their soul. But I don't understand how that works, sir. 
One splits one's soul and hides part of it in an object. By doing so, you are protected should you be attacked and your body destroyed. Protected? The part of the soul that is hidden lives on. <clears throat> in other words, you cannot die. And how does one split his soul, sir? I think you already know the answer to that, Tom. Murder. Yes. Killing rips the soul apart. It's a violation against nature. Can you only split the soul once? For instance, isn't seven the most powerful magical number? Seven? Merlin's beard, Tom. Isn't it bad enough to consider killing one person, but to rip the soul into seven pieces? But this is, this is, this is all uh, hypothetical, isn't it, Tom? <laughs> all academic. Of course, sir. It'll be our little secret. Casey. Master Mao. Casey, you have the strength and passion of a tiger, and yet your heart leads you astray. Jared can't be saved. I don't believe that, Master. I've seen the human in him when he defended Camille. He hasn't always been bad. Yes, and whilst that's true, even I couldn't get through to him. He's gone too far down the dark path. Jared has given himself over to Daishi. No, you're wrong. Jared's fighting to get out, I can feel it. But your feeling is guilt. Guilt? You feel responsible for Jared's fall. If you hadn't come to the academy. Then none of this would have happened. Jared and I wouldn't have fought. You wouldn't have kicked him out. And he wouldn't have released Daishi. Investigate your soul, Casey. You know that Jared's heart wasn't pure. Or maybe he was so alone that there was nothing pure to fill his heart. If you go to Daishi's domain, then you are likely to be destroyed. Is that what you want? Thank you, Master, for all that you've done. But this is something I have to do. <laughs> 